All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 83, and today I will be presenting and explaining the chemical analysis of a coding compound that was discovered by the ACIDA project on the external limestone casing blocks of the central pyramid of Giza. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, another exterior ceiling layer similar to what was discovered on the casing stones of the red pyramid of Dashur. And as I mentioned in my previous site visit to the central pyramid, it appears that all of these structures may have been coated and sealed, not only internally within the reaction chambers, but externally as well. If this is the type of content that you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So first, let's review the chemical analysis and function of the coating compound that was discovered on the exterior side of the remaining casing stones on the Red Pyramid of Dashur. This material is mostly composed of sulfur trioxide, silicon dioxide, and calcium oxides, as well as smaller amounts of aluminum, magnesium, and iron oxides. And just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, as the percentages of these minerals and materials are very important. Here in this area of the sample, coming in at 55.02% sulfur trioxide, 19.65% calcium oxide, 13.65% silicon dioxide, and then 9.5% aluminum trioxide, 1.84% magnesium oxide, and 0.34% iron oxide. Next area of the sample, 33.18% silicon dioxide, 26.97% sulfur trioxide, 15.07% aluminum trioxide, 13.13% calcium oxide, 3.32% magnesium oxide, 2.57% sodium oxide, 2.48% potassium oxide, 1.4% iron oxide, and 0.4% titanium dioxide. Here we have 40.98% sulfur trioxide, 28.88% silicon dioxide, 20.81% aluminum trioxide, and 9.33% calcium oxide. Then 30.45% silicon dioxide, 25.38% sulfur trioxide, 18.41% calcium oxide, 12.75% aluminum trioxide, 3.47% potassium oxide, 2.59% sodium oxide, 12.51% magnesium oxide, and 2.21% iron oxide. Here we have 36.32% sulfur trioxide, 26.49% silicon dioxide, 20.4% calcium oxide, 11.83% aluminum trioxide, 2.22% iron oxide, and 2.21% magnesium oxide, and 0.52% potassium oxide. Next, 32.43% sulfur trioxide, 31.64% silicon dioxide, 14.69% aluminum trioxide, 12.12% calcium oxide, 2.88% magnesium oxide, 2.36% sodium oxide, 1.48% potassium oxide, and 0.72% iron oxide. Then 37.96% sulfur trioxide, 25.09% silicon dioxide, 18.19% calcium oxide, 12.7% aluminum trioxide, 2.4% magnesium oxide, 1.49% sodium oxide, and 0.88% iron oxide. And finally, 39.39% sulfur trioxide, 
25.59% silicon dioxide, 15.36% calcium oxide, 14.9% aluminum trioxide, 2.69% magnesium oxide, 1.1% potassium oxide, and 0.3% iron oxide. So we have a sealing paint or coating compound applied to the exterior of the red pyramid made mostly more than 50% by weight of sulfur trioxide and silicon dioxide with median components of calcium oxide and aluminum trioxide and small amounts of magnesium, potassium, sodium, and iron oxides. And remember all of these constituents because it will be coming up again in just a moment. And as previously explained, this coating compound appears to be a copolymer material made from solid sulfur trioxide and silicon dioxide that may have functioned similarly to this surface coating compound presented by the Royal Society of Chemistry, composed of solid sulfur trioxide and dicyclopentadiene that is, quote, insoluble and resistant to acids and solvents, end quote could be applied to concrete and other materials like limestone, for example, to provide, quote, broad protection from corrosion and solvents, end quote, and may have been easily or perhaps even self-repairable with, quote, surface scratches removed through the application of heat, end quote. So now that we understand the composition and function of the red pyramid paint, let's move on to the coating compound discovered at the Central Pyramid of Giza. And the following document was prepared by my colleague and team member at the ACIDA project. And he is the technician who runs the chemical analyses and tested these samples from the reddish material that you can see here on the casing stones. And some up close images of these limestone casing blocks and the coating material here and another here. And this material has a very similar appearance to the coating that was discovered on the casing stones of the red pyramid. And you can still see this quote unquote paint on the remaining casing stones at the top of the central pyramid. And it is clear as day when looking at this area in person. And side note, I was just on the Giza Plateau this past weekend, and it appears that the head of the Sphinx is also coated with this same reddish material. More on that and the Sphinx enclosure coming up in a future episode. So please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I got some Fire Land of Chem merch, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, both different logos, a ton of different colors. Digital copies of the book are still available. Reprints will be coming out soon. And also extremely rare signed copies of the limited first edition will also be available on the website. I'll be making a formal announcement here when everything is ready. But for now, if you want to show some love, just check out the land of chem.com and thank you all so much for the support. All right. Now here is a close up image of this coding material. And in this analysis, an analytic scanning electron microscope was used to evaluate the elements in the mountains, which are the high areas here and the valleys which are the low areas here. And this is the comparative breakdown of what was discovered in these high and low areas of the sample material. And I will read the high areas or mountains first and low areas or valleys second. Oxygen, 57.45% and 55.3%. Sodium, 1.6% and 0.764%. Magnesium, 0.61% and 0.912%. Aluminum, 2.62% and 4.506%. Silicon, 5.99% and 10.78%. Phosphorus, 10.06% and 5.22%. Sulfur, 1.6% and 3.484%. Chlorine, 0.74% and 0.632%. Potassium, 0.56% and 1.1%. Calcium, 17.1% and 15.26%. Titanium, 0% and 0.352%. Manganese, 
0% and 0.454% and iron 1.66% and 4.228%. And here we have a breakdown of what remains when you remove the calcium, potassium, chlorine, magnesium, sodium, and oxygen, which are part of the limestone matrix material and not part of the coating compound. And we have left reading mountains first and valleys second, 2.62% aluminum, 4.506%, silicon, 5.99%, 10.78%, phosphorus, 10.06%, 5.22%, sulfur, 1.6%, 3.484%, titanium, 0%, and 0.352%, manganese, 0%, and 0.454%, and iron with 1.66% in the mountains, and 4.228% in the low areas or valleys. You can see that all of the metallic oxides are higher in the low areas or valleys, and phosphorus is the only element that is higher on the surface, which was perplexing to our technician that ran these samples. So he also tested the composition of the matrix limestone material to give me three comparative levels to analyze that you can see here. In the mountains column here, the valleys column here, and the matrix limestone column here. Once again, he removed the constituents of the limestone itself, leaving us with this. And I will read the mountains first, valleys second, and matrix layer third. So aluminum, 2.62%, 4.506%. And 5.41%, silicon, 5.99%, 10.78%, and 14.81%, phosphorus, 10.06%, 5.22%, and 1.76%, sulfur, 1.6%, 3.484%, and 2.99%, titanium, 0%, 0.352%, and 0.48%. Manganese, 0%, 0.454%, and 0%. And finally, iron, with 1.66% in the mountains, 4.228% in the valleys, and 4.79% in the interior matrix layer, leaving, once again, more metallic oxides in the innermost part of the sample near the matrix compared to the exterior layer, except for phosphorus, which is almost 10 times higher concentration on the surface, which he exclaimed down here at the bottom and said, let's think, if necessary, we will analyze further. So keep in mind that this document was prepared for the internal consumption and analysis of the ACIDA project team, of which I am a member, and I was given exclusive access to present this data as they have trusted me to honestly interpret these results. So his data was left with an open-ended question. Why is there more phosphorus on the surface layer and the metal oxides on the innermost layer? Well, I did some research and now have an absolutely groundbreaking explanation regarding phosphorus coating compounds. So now I will read this passage describing the phosphate conversion coating process. Phosphate conversion coating is a chemical treatment applied to steel parts. So let's replace steel parts with a limestone block that creates a thin adhering layer of iron, zinc, or manganese phosphates to achieve corrosion resistance, lubrication, or as a foundation for subsequent coatings and paintings. Okay, now, are any of these elements sounding familiar? How about the corrosion resistance properties? So this reference came from Wikipedia, and now let's move on to a more technical scientific reference. This one coming from metcoat.com, which is a company that manufactures these phosphorus coating compounds. So phosphate coatings 
are a crystalline conversion coating for steel and other metals. Again, let's replace steel and other metals with this limestone block that is formed on a ferrous metal substrate. The process of phosphate coating is employed for the purpose of pre-treatment prior to coating or painting, increasing corrosion protection and improving friction properties of sliding components. So what we have here in this analysis is the metallic substrate layer that was applied first. As you can see here, the highest concentrations of the iron, titanium, and manganese in this innermost layer. These metallic compounds are infused within a silicon and sulfur-based copolymer, exactly as we saw at the red pyramid. And you can see here the silicon and sulfur also being highest on the innermost layer. The phosphorus coating was then applied to the outside surface to further seal the coating layer and increase its corrosion resistance. Now, I'm still working with our technician so we can get the actual compounds, not just the elements, just like he showed in the analysis of the red pyramid paint. So I can confirm the presence of the metallic phosphates, solid sulfur trioxide, silicon dioxide, etc. But with this new understanding of this coating compound, it appears that we have all the qualities of the red pyramid external sealer. But now with the additional sophistication of the exterior phosphate coating material to further increase the functionality and corrosion resistance of this material. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence is really stacking up for my hypothesis of the industrial scale chemistry of this ancient civilization. And this is just the beginning. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 83, the coating compound of the Central Pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you thought this episode was interesting, ooh, just wait until you see what I have coming up over the next several weeks and months here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. Next up, a special permission access visit to Abu Sir on the Sunday site, Visit 10. If this is the type of content that you're interested in, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.